Hey there nation, and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and welcome to another episode of Cheap Shots. This series is dedicated to showing you how to save money on our miniatures wargaming hobby, and on this episode, episode number 56, we're going to show you guys how to cheaply as well as quickly paint up a gang of Goliath gangers for Games Workshop Nickermunda. So as you can see in this photo, this is what the end result would look like for this gang. We're using our very nice cheapskate method and assuming that you're buying everything for the very first time using our cheapskate method, it's going to cost you a grand total investment of $35.56 in order to paint up your gang to look just like this using uh, the different techniques as well as materials that we recommend. And when you compare this to the exact same shopping list from Citadel and Army Painter, you're talking about a grand total savings of $135.64. So that being said, let's go and get this video started. We're going to show you guys how to quickly as well as cheaply paint up some go uh, Goliath Gangers for Nickermunda and at the same time saving you a bunch of money. So let's get this started. Alright, so the very first thing you do, of course, is to prime your miniatures. In this case, I use a can of Rust-Oleum Flat White Primer. I get a can of this stuff at my local Walmart. It costs me $3.99. Now, the reason why you want to prime your miniatures is because it does two things. First of all, it creates an uneven surface on the surface of your miniature, so that way your acrylic paint can quickly adhere and stick to your miniature at the same time. While that's occurring, the color that you use in order to prime your miniature also actually has quite a bit of impact on the um, on the color and the overall finish of your miniature as well. Traditionally speaking, if you're looking for a bright, vibrant color for your uh, bright and vibrant uh, color scheme for your miniatures, you typically want to paint them with uh, white primer, so that way that white undercoat will help to. Uh, brighten the colors that you put on top of it. Um, if you just want to have like a medium looking color, gray is another perfect example of that. And if you plan on using darker colors, usually you want to use black. Now in this case, since this is a quick paint method, we'll be priming our miniatures in white primer. And if you'll notice, the colors that we use are very bright and vibrant when we paint up these miniatures. And the reason why that is the case is because when we go to our oil wash, the oil wash is going to do a couple things. It's going to, first of all, dark down the colors that we use. So that is why we're using such bright colors, because those colors will be muted during the oil wash process at the same time any dry brushing that we do it's going to smooth out the transitions between the base coats as well as the dry brushes and lastly the oil wash will seep into the recesses in the miniatures bringing a lot of detail out and that's the reason why we go with flat white primer for our very first step so for our next step now that we're done priming the miniatures the next thing we need to do now is to paint the flesh usually the the typical technique that it comes to painting your miniatures is that you paint your miniatures the same way you dress the person. So the first thing you start off with is the flesh, and then you go to the undergarments, and then from there you just kind of layer out. That's pretty much how it works. Now for this Goliath gang, um, my friend actually wanted a dark flesh uh, colored scheme for his Goliath. So because of that, we decided to paint all their skins exactly the same color using Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel Paint. You can find this at your local hobby, uh, local Walmart. It costs you about 50 cents for a two ounce tube, um, and you just put two thin coats of this Burnt Umber on all your miniatures and it creates a nice really solid black uh, darker skin tone on the miniatures as well so that's what makes a really good base coat for you to work off of especially when you go to your dry brushing phase so just put two thin coats of burnt umber and you're ready to move on to the next step now the next step that you do of course is after you get done with your base coat using burnt umber the next thing you do of course is a dry brush now dry brushing does a couple of things first of all it creates a sense of three-dimensionality to your miniatures what ends up happening is when you dry brush your miniature the lighter pastel color catches upon the raised surfaces of the miniature so that way it creates natural highlights so for example if you look at these guys these goliaths are very muscular so it catches the raised surfaces of the muscular musculature quite nicely while leaving that dark burnt umber color in the recesses of the miniature so it creates a lot of three-dimensional Reality also brings out a lot of the detail in the flesh that wasn't there before before we did our dry brush now typically when you do a dry brush it's always a better idea to start off dry brushing your miniatures lightly with a light layer of dry brushing and the reason why is because the more you dry brush your miniature the more bright the paint job will be so you can always add additional layers of brightness to your miniature by just adding more dry brushing layers of territorial beige it's always better to work in small layers working upwards than it is to go back because once you start dry brushing miniature the only way you can fix it of course is by base coating all over again and starting the crawl process all over again from there. So now that we're done dry brushing and base coating the flesh, the next thing we need to do now is start painting the trousers. Now in this case, I decided to use three different colors for the trousers on these miniatures. And the reason why I did that is because for Nicker miniatures, pretty much the torso as well as the legs are, are very similar through all the sculpts. Pretty much you're given a box set that has uh, 10 fighters and basically five of those 
sculpts are used twice is what they end up doing. So for example, you have two miniatures that use exactly the same set of legs and the exact same torso. So it kind of creates that double damage on it. So in order to solve that problem, the easiest way in order to dispel that is by painting similar miniatures that have similar sculpts in their torsos and legs different colors and alternate the colors so that way it creates that illusion that each one of these fighters is individual as well as unique and so by adding some variety to your miniatures and for your gang is a nice way of doing that and that's the reason why I painted these guys with three different colors for their trousers as you can see in this photo I painted two of their trousers the guy on the left hand side I painted with two thin layers of khaki uh, that's made by Apple Barrel paint you can find it at your local Walmart for the three fighters in the center which is the gang leader as well as his two champions I use Anita's uh, pure gray acrylic paint uh, that costs you about 65 such as your local Hobby Lobby. And then for the last two fighters on the right hand side, I use the Skyline by Folk Art that runs about 75 cents to local Hobby Lobby, and I put two thin layers on that. So that way there's some color variety in the trousers that these characters are wearing as well. So just put two thin layers and you're ready to move on to your dry brush. So for my dry brushing, I just contoured the dry brushing on the fighters with gray trousers as well as Skyline trousers. I used uh, Pale Gray by Folk Art. You can get this stuff at your local Hobby Lobby for about 75 cents. And I just did a quick once over with the dry brushing on that. Now for the fighters that I painted their pants khaki, I'm not gonna do any dry brushing whatsoever. And the reason why is because the khaki is a nice pale color. So you really don't need to do any dry brushing because once you add the oil wash, it's gonna bring out those finer details in the miniature automatically. So now that we're done with the trousers, the next thing we need to work on are the boots. So these gangs, uh, these uh, Goliath gang members actually have these huge kind of like steel toe boots that they actually wear. And once again, I divided them into two color groups. And the reason why is so that way there is some variety in the colors that we use for the sculpts that we have as well. So for example, I'm not sure if you can tell this, but the fighter in the front right hand side on the left hand side grouping, his sculpt's exactly the same as the Goliath fighter in the back right hand corner arm of the renderizer. So they're both exactly sculpted the same with the same torso as well as the same legs. So as you can see I painted one guy with a pair of black boots and the other guy with a pair of brown boots just to create that uh, illusion that these guys have are different sculpts and so that way it adds some variety to the, to the miniatures as well. So for the ones that I decided to paint with black boots I used two thin coats of pavement by Apple Barrel Paint. You can find that at your local Walmart for about 50 cents. It's a nice dark dark gray and it looks really really good when you dry brush it. And then for the other three fighters I picked out their boots and two thin coats of Anita's acrylic moccasin brown. You can find this at your local Hobby Lobby for about 65 cents is a nice reddish brownish color and does a really good uh, job when you use it for leather goods so just put two thin layers on that and you're ready to move on to your next step so our next step of course is to dry brush the leather of the boots for the ones that I painted with pavement I once again use pale gray by folk art and for the ones that I painted with moccasin brown I use light mocha it's made by apple barrel paint costs you about 50 cents at your local Walmart for two fluid ounces just do a once over real quick with the dry brushing with both the light mocha as well as the pale gray on the black boots and the brown boots so that way you get that three-dimensionality the crinkles and creases of the boots catches along the raised surfaces and creates that highlighting effect while keeping that darker color in the recesses now for the next step on this one, what we're going to do now is start painting the leather straps that are connected to the uh, boots. Now the, in the Goliath gang, what ended up happening is that they have these metal plates that are like kind of like shin guards that they have for their boots. And they have these leather straps in the back of them in order to connect them to the to the body. So in this case, I used a uh, Baratorial Beige by Apple Barrel Paint. And I use this for the guys who are equipped with black boots, as you can see here, these four guys. So I just kind of showed you the reverse, that way you can see that. I just picked out two thin layers of Baratorial Beige upon those leather straps, uh, so that way you can see that color contrast that territory beige contrast is nice with the black boots and kind of creates that illusion that you know they got different leather goods uh, for their armor so continuing on the leather goods what I decided to do next is to use black I used the pavement color for the guys armed with brown boots so that way they can see that contrasting with their uh, armor straps or their boots. Now, the Goliath members actually have these breastplates that they wear for their furnace plates. They have straps along the shoulders. They also have belts that go across their hips as well as around their forearms. So for those leather goods, I picked those out in two thin layers of pavement by Apple Barrel Paint. You don't need to worry about dry brushing it, and the reason why is because the pavement is a nice contrasting color to the darker skin tone that we have for these fighters, and so you don't really need to worry about dry brushing it because it already contrasts it nicely enough. You just need to put two thin layers of Apple Barrel Paint, and then you're ready to move on to the armor panels. All right, so our next step now is to base coat the armor panels. Now, if you'll notice, we're actually using a very unorthodox color for these Goliath gangers. Traditionally speaking, whenever you see Goliath gangs, there's a lot of oranges and reds that are primarily used for their uh, for their furnace plates because, you know, it's a nice, dark, threatening color, these orange and red colors, and it has a really nice industrial look for them. And that's the most typical color that you see for most Goliath gangs. However, the problem with using orange and red armor for Goliath gangs is that 
everyone does it. I mean, that's the problem. Uh, whenever I do a paint job for my miniatures, I like to make them a little bit unique, like something you haven't seen before. And you really don't see Goliath gang members with teal color armor. You just don't see that. And so it's been kind of like a neat, interesting experiment to painting it up with different teal colors to see exactly how it turns out. And that's exactly what we did. So as you can see in this photo, once again, I divided up the gang between two different groups so that way we can alternate colors so that way that it creates additional variety or the illusion variety in the sculpts. For three of the fighters, a champion and two gangers, I picked picked out their armor in Tahitian blue. It's made by uh, Delta Serum Coat. You can get this at your local Hobby Library for about 65 cents. I put two thin layers on that. So you can see I put on their breastplates as well as their shoulder guards, their masks that they're wearing them, as well as their shin guard and leg armor plates as well. Now for the other four fighters, I picked their armor out in two thin layers of Tuscan teal by Apple Barrel Paint. And that runs you about 50 cents at your local Walmart as well. It's a nice dark teal color and it does a really nice job as well. As you can see, both gang groups are actually have the overall theme of teal, but there is enough differences in variety and color in those teals that kind of gives that idea that these guys are all individual fighters as well. So now that we're done base coating the armor panels, the next thing of course we need to do is a quick dry brush. In this case, I use Dutch Aqua by Folk Art. You can find this product at your local Hobby Lobby for about 75 cents. And I just did a quick dry brushing on all the teal armor panels as well. And the reason why is because these armor panels actually do have some rivets and some spikes and some details within the armor panels as well. Once again, creating that three-dimensional look to it, using that uh, Dutch Aqua to cast the raised surfaces of the armor, while the darker colors remain in the recesses. So you just do a quick once over real quick for the dry brushing for both the Tuscan teal as well as the Tahitian blue armor, and you're ready to move on to your next step. All right, so the next step that we're working now are on the weapons as, and some of the mohawks for these guys as well. And so I decided to paint those elements using True Red by Anita's Acrylic Paint. It's a nice, bright, vibrant red color. It's one of the best red color paints that I've actually worked with. And it costs you about 65 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. Now, the reason why I went with red is because red is a natural contrasting color to teal. So they contrast against each other quite nicely. So you can see there, you can still see the vibrancy of the armor as well as the vibrancy of the weapons that they're carrying as well. So things that I painted uh, with two thin layers of red are things like the weapon casings and all the guns, uh, the grips of all the melee weapons as well. And I also have two fighters that have mohawks there on the right hand side. And for their mohawk, I just picked down two thin layers of Anita's acrylic red as well, because once again, that red color contrasts so nicely with that teal color. You just do that with two thin layers for all the portions that you want to be red, and you're ready to move on to your next step. So for this next step, uh, we decided to paint all the metallic pieces. So all the base coating for most of the miniatures are completed. Now we got to cost around the metallics. In this case, I picked out all the parts that are going to be silver with Anniversary Silver by Folk Art. Now traditionally, I use Gunmetal Gray by Folk Art, which is a nice Gunmetal Gray color that I use for all the metallics for these guys. But because these guys have such a vibrant paint job, I wanted to create a little bit of a brighter effect for these Goliaths. Like these Goliaths actually take care of their weapons and their equipment, unlike their other brethren who let it rust. So because I put everything out that I want to be silver and two thin layers of anniversary silver. This includes the rim of the chest plates on some of the spikes as well as the armor panels that they have. That part was extremely frustrating to do, I'm not gonna lie, but the end result looks really nice. So I picked those out as well, parts of the weapons, gas masks that they're wearing as well. I picked those out, anything that I want silver, I picked on two thin layers of this uh, anniversary silver color as well. So once you guys are done with that, now it's time to move on to your gold color elements. So for the gold color elements on these miniatures, I picked out those details and two thin layers of pure gold by Folk Art. You can get this stuff at your local Hobby Lobby for about 75 cents. So as you can see, I actually rimmed the armor and some of these guys in this gold color as well. So for example, the gang leader with the power hammer, his chest plate is actually uh, outlined in gold as well as his shoulder pad that he has there as well. Uh, same thing with the champion armor, the renderizing axe, I trimmed his armor in gold color paint as well, just to add some variety to it as well. Also the skull icons from the Goliath, how it's Goliath, icon I also picked those out in two thin layers of pure gold as well so whatever elements that you want to be gold just pick those out in two thin layers and you're ready to move on so the next color that I decided to use is copper. Uh, it's made by Folk Art Paint. It costs you about 75 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. So for all the, the accent colors that I use in the armor as well as the weapons, I picked those out in copper. So we use gold and silver originally for the armor panels as well as like the buckles of the leather goods and things of that nature. The copper color is primarily used for the weapons. So for example, like the giant skull on the renderizer axe, I picked that out in two thin layers of copper. Uh, magazines for the guns, uh, for the plasma pistols, I use it for their energy so as well as for their barrels. For the stick grenades that these characters are carrying, I use it for the, the shafts of the stick grenades as well. I also use it to pick out some small little iconography on the weaponry as well. And then finally, the last thing I picked out in copper were the kneecaps for each of the uh, leg armor that they're wearing for these fighters as well. I just put two thin layers of copper paint and we're ready to move on to our fine details now. 
All right, so now that we're done with all the base coating for the metallics and the armor, the next thing we need to work on now are the fine details of the miniature. So things like the eyes. For most of these Goliath gangers, as you can see, almost every single one of these guys are wearing a mask of some sort. And the reason why is because I thought that those masks looked really, really awesome on the Goliath gangers, so I actually converted some of them to have masks as well. Now, two fighters don't, uh, three fighters do not have masks. Uh, there's a couple of guys who are just wearing respirators only, and you can see their faces. So for the eyes of the gas masks, as well as for the characters who are just wearing respirators, I picked them out with two thin layers of lime sherbet, which is a nice, vibrant green color, and I put in all their eyes. Now, you might be wondering, well, Commander Chiefskate, why the green color? The reason why is because uh, these characters, these Goliath characters, are supposed to be these steroided out genetically altered human beings that give a lot of chems as well as drugs and steroids in order to make them really strong and really big and really powerful. And uh, when I was a kid, there was a movie that was out in the mid 80s called The Beastmaster was what it was called. And in that movie, there are these frightening uh, like dogmen that like there's these human beings that they put in this black armor and they pour this, you know, Kim light looking green goo in their ears. And what it does, it transforms the person from a normal human being into like this berserker animal creature that just ran around and killed people. And they have these glowing green eyes. I remember those being really terrifying looking when I was a little kid. Well, I wanted to create that same look for these Goliath guys like these guys are so rutted out that their eyes are not even normal colors anymore so that's the reason why i picked up the lime sherbet for that at the same time these goliath characters are also carrying a lot of plasma weapons as well so like for the plasma pistols the venting on the top i picked those out in two thin layers of winter green i also did exactly the same thing for the gun sights with the scopes as well as for the eyes of the renderizing axe to make it look like there's this otherworldly glowing effect going on for these guys so i picked out those details in lime sherbet as well as winter green and we're ready to move on to our next little um detail so the very last thing I decided to work on was the Stim Slug Stash. So like I said before, Goliath gang members are notoriously use, uh, are notorious for using chems and psychotropic medications and illegal and illegal narcotics in order to make uh, Goliath fighters bigger, stronger, and more ferocious. And if you look up the armor for the Goliaths, they actually have like these little vials all over their armor. So like for example, the champion in the front there, he's got these vials built into their chest plates, for example. They also have these little vials built into the forearms of their armor. Also on the back, they have these harnesses that they wear that injects this chemical goo into their bloodstream to make them even more violent fighters. You can also attach stim slug stash accessory kits to all of your fighters as well. So for all those little vials of Kims that these Goliath characters are carrying, I decided to pick those out in two thin layers of Kiwi by Apple Barrel Paint, which is a very, very bright, vibrant green color that's almost a yellow color as well. So you can see this is what that detail looks like for the guys up here when you're looking at the front of them. Meanwhile, here's a close-up of their backs. As you can see, you can see those Kims, uh, those little fluid vials on their back on these harnesses they all wear. They also have them directly in the small of their backs as well. And I just picked all those out in two thin layers of Kiwi. Same thing with the cables that run between the weapons as well as uh, the armor for these guys. And the reason why I chose this Kiwi color is because um, back on PlayStation 3, I believe, first came out there was a video game called haze that came out from the playstation 3 and in that video game haze it's like a post-apocalyptic future first person shooting game and these shock troopers that you play in this game they they all get injected with this yellowish green substance that basically makes them into so basically it's a combat drug it makes them super violent and super powerful but at the same time though it gives them a very wicked crash when they're not using this stuff and it's super super highly addictive so to kind of go with this narrative idea with this gang because this gang is called the stem punks which means that they use stems stimulants artificial narcotics and chemicals to make themselves look stronger i decided because i used that as an inspiration to make that color that kiwi color for all the, the chemicals that they ingest uh to make them like super hyped up and roided out and so that's the reason why we did that so i just put two thin layers of kiwi and then from there we're ready to move on to our oil wash so we're doing oil wash this time. Now, usually I use Minwax Poly Shades Mission Oak for most of my oil washes, and that's pretty much how we do it. However, we wanted to create, uh, with this Goliath gang, we wanted to create, uh, uh, preserve the vibrancy of the metallics, as well as the bright color of the armor. So we didn't want to darken it too down too much with, with the oil wash. So to, in order to solve this problem, what we did is a 50-50 mix. I took 50% Midwax Poly Shades Mission Oak color, and I mixed it with 50% of Midwax Poly Acrylic clear gloss that I have. Now traditionally I use the clear gloss for like slime effects and for like blood and for Nurgle Rot effects that I make uh, for my homemade uh, Nurgle Rot and homemade Blood for the Blood God effects that I use. But um, when we were experimenting with this, it actually acts like contrast medium almost. It actually acts like a contrast medium that's used in Games Workshop products. So when I mix the poly shades with the clear gloss, it actually 
thinned out the pigment of the mission oak color and so it allowed us to add this oil wash to go directly into the recesses to bring out those details it also smoothed out the dry brushing that we did but at the same time though it was not as dark as it usually is when i usually do the uh, oil wash for these miniatures so that part was really nice as you can see we still kept the vibrancy the reds the teals the yellows and the greens that we put on these guys by the same time though we still kind of muted down the colors a little bit and at the same time we also um also at the same time also uh, allowed these uh, transitions to be smoothed out as well which creates this really nice effect and so it, it came out really nice now once you do this oil washing stage you do need to wait 24 hours for this stuff to dry as well as cure so that way you don't ruin the finish of your miniatures now once you're done with that you're going to have this candy coated sheen that's on the outside of the miniatures you could of course spray them down with mart varnish which i do in order to flatten that sheen down and make it look more matte but if you like that cut cut that uh, candy color kind of coating look on them you can just skip that matte varnish spray and, and move on so now that we're done with the miniatures the next thing we need to work on now are on the bases so in this case we decided to pick out their bases in two thin layers of copper by folk art uh true, traditionally speaking whenever we use bases we usually have like this kind of rusted nasty stained oily type of industrial look uh but this time around for the stem punks we actually want to keep that color quite vibrant and actually quite clean looking on these guys so we decided to do the bases just a little bit different um the reason why is because for most goliath gangs the paint jobs they look really grimy and nasty looking we wanted these goliaths to look pristine as if you know they took care of their gear so we just put two thin layers of copper paint and then from there we move on to our dry brush after the copper paint dried, we then dry brushed the copper with a thin layer of, uh, of a silver anniversary silver by Folk Art. Just a once over real quick with the dry brushing, catching the raised surfaces of the miniatures. But at the same time, keeping that darker copper color in the recesses of the bases. So this way it kind of creates this kind of like shiny, shimmering look on the, on the bases that these guys are walking on. And then to bring all the design elements together on the bases, we then do a quick uh, watered down wash using burnt umber. Now for those of you guys who are wondering, uh, I don't really use washes all that often in my miniatures. I usually just use an oil wash. But if I do have to use a different colored wash for anything, what I do is I just make my own homemade wash. And making homemade wash is actually quite simple. Uh, all you need to do is just take whatever color you want to make into a wash, you put it in a palette, and then you add water to it. And all you do is you just water it down to the paint is about the consistency of milk. And once you do that, you just take that homemade wash and just wash your miniature to make it look good. In this case, I just put that wash all over the bases. So that way that dark umber color goes into the recesses. It's a much cheaper way than buying actual washes from like Games Workshop or Army Painter. Now, I know some people out there who paint with miniatures would be like, well, wait a minute, Commander Chiefskate. By mixing your acrylic paint with water, you're just watering down the pigment. It's not going to have a strong finish. Okay, granted, that does happen. In which case, if that's the case, you're not happy with the washing that you just done, all you need to do is just add another layer of the homemade wash, and that will solve your problem. And you can wash your miniature to the desired effect that you want. In which case, I only added two thin layers of the uh, burnt umber wash, and then from there, I'm ready to move on. So now that we're done with the bases, the very last step we need to do now is, of course, is to rim the bases with uh, Skyline by Folk Art. Um, I like using this color. I use this kind of like urban grayish, stormy gr uh, gray blue color. I use it for every single miniature that we actually use in our Nicaragua collection, so that way it's all unified to make it look like they're fighting in a city. So I just put two thin layers of Skyline on their bases, and once it's dry, you are completely finished with your Goliath gang. And once again, this is the end result of what the stem punks will look like. As you can see, they have a beautiful tabletop finish on these miniatures as well to a tabletop standard. At the same time, they look bright and vibrant, but at the same time, they still look a little wasted and, and, and grimy at the same time. And they look like they're ready to fight it out for honor and glory and the urban hellscape of the ash wastes. So there you have you guys. This is what the end result of what your gangers would look like if you use our cheapskate method in order to paint up your Goliath gang. So now that we're done talking about the cheapskate method and what the end result will look like for these miniatures, what we're going to do now is actually talk about what products you will need to purchase from both Citadel and Army Painter to paint this gang up exactly the same way we did, and we're going to talk about the price differences between the expensive method of using Citadel and Army Painter versus the cheapskate method. So, assuming you're buying everything for the very first time uh, from Citadel as well as Army Painter, the first thing you'll need to do is buy a can of Corox White Spray to act as a primer for your miniature. That stuff will cost you $17. From there, you'll need to paint the skin color with Wildwood, uh, which runs you $7.80, and then you'll need to do a quick dry brushing with Baylor Brown, which costs you $4.55 for that. Now, for the trousers, you'll need to buy a pot of Morgas Bone. Uh, for the trousers, they're gonna be a uh, gray color. You'll need to buy a, uh, uh, sorry, khaki color. You'll need to buy a, a pot of 
Slanesh gray. We wanted you 455 for the gray pants. And for those pants you want to create in that skyish uh, grayish blue color, you'll need to buy a pot of rust gray. And all three colors run $4.55 for those. You'll then need to dry brush your pants as well as your boots with Ultimate Gray, which costs you $4.55 for those. And for the boots, you'll need to buy a pot of Eshin Gray and XV88 for the boots, and that costs you $4.55 for those. Now, for the uh, the the, the uh, for the leather straps for the armor, you'll need to buy a pot of Bane Blade Brown, runs you $4.55 for that. Now, for the armor for these guys, you'll need to buy a pot of Baharoth Blue as well as Thunderhawk Blue, which runs you $4.55 for those. And then you'll need to dry brush them real quick with a pot of Aethermatic Blue, which runs you $7.08 for that color. Now, for all the red accents on these miniatures, you'll need to use a pot of Mephiston Red, which runs you $4.55 for that. And then for the metallic colors, you'll need to buy a pot of Retributor Armor for the gold, Screaming Bell for the copper, as well as Iron Breaker for the silver pieces. And all three of those pots run you $7.80 for those. Lastly, for the green details that we've done on the plasma guns, as well as the Kim uh, injectors that they use for their bodies, you'll need to buy Cyberite Green, Gas Blaster Green, and Moot Green, and all three of those pots cost $4.55 each. Now, if you're going to do the quick paint method like we did, you will need to buy a pot of Army Painter Strong Tone. I'm sorry, not Strong Tone, Soft Tone. Runs at $32 for that pot. And then, of course, you'll need to spray with a can of Munitorium Varnish for $19.50. Now, like I said before, assume that you're buying all of these products from Citadel and Army Painter for the very first time, you're talking about a grand total investment of $171.20 in order to paint up your Goliath game the same way we did with these name brand products. Now, for the cheapskate method, if you were to buy everything for the very first time to paint up your gang using our cheapskate method, you're talking about a grand total investment of $35.56. Now, when you compare the differences of $171.20 and you subtract the cheapskate method of $35.56, you end up with a grand total savings of $135.64 saved, and which is basically a large comparison compared to that. It's almost four times as much uh, being saved by just using the cheapskate method in order to paint up your miniatures as well with a great tabletop finish and you're able to bring uh, blood and glory into the underhive so there you have it guys that's how we got that's how we cheaply as well as quickly paint up a gang of goliath uh gangers from nicaragua as always please feel free to like comment and or subscribe your guys input is invaluable to us as always also check us out on facebook instagram as well as blogger.com for all the latest greatest hobby news related to our channel that's gonna do for this one you guys we'll catch you guys in the next one peace out and stay classy